So praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel, for sharing with us uh, God's miracle. God is a miracle-working God. And He's always working. Even when we don't feel it, we don't see it, God is just working in our lives. So this morning, we receive that miracle. If you need it, then God is speaking to your heart today. God performed a miracle for me this week. I went for a wisdom teeth operation on Tuesday. I wasn't mentally prepared for it and it hit me really hard. And today, if I'm speaking a little bit gently, more gentle than I used to, it's because my mouth cannot open too big, all right? But I was praying so hard, I'll recover totally because I'm just passionate about preaching uh, today's word with us and I didn't, I didn't want to miss the chance. So my sharing is on the power of being real. The power of being real. I want to talk to us about why we want to be real people. Real people that go through ups and downs, right, goes through different seasons in life. And what does it mean to be real as a Christian? And of course, this is part of our series on culture makers, where we remind ourselves as believers, we are not of this culture of the world. But because we are children of God, we begin to live in a different way. We have a different way of thinking, feeling, behaving. That's culture. What is culture? The way you think, the way you feel, the way you behave. And so we are using our faith name, acronym, to bring out five very important values that together we may be that kind of church that will honour God bless one another, and also attract others to God. So the A in F-A-I-T-H is about being real, authenticity. And last week, we looked at how faith must be the foundation. All things start with having faith in God, dying to ourselves and living in the faith or in the new life that God gives us. And then the next thing that happens to us, and one of the very powerful things that happen to us when we know God is the way we begin to love yourself and others changes. Let me repeat that again. The way you love people after you know God, the way you love your children, the way you love your spouse, the way you want to love your country, the way you love changes. And that's because God has, is doing a work in our hearts. So this morning, let's talk about being real. We want to value authenticity. We also want to promote it. In spite of the challenges and disappointments where we think love cannot be real and where we might be really hurt in time past by different things. But the word of the God, Lord tells us that this is part of who God is and He puts that in us. So we want to look at being real. The challenges these days and uh, yesterday was a very, we had a very interesting article from the Straits Times that talks about how we are very concerned about young people's mental health. And that is because, all right, um, there is this influence called technology, fast and furious. And so schools in Singapore in October will be imposing phone bans to reduce distractions and rekindle social interaction. So one of the things we are experiencing in our day and age is how technology, right, whether it will enhance the way we draw closer together or it will actually separate us. We forget how to connect. We don't know how to talk to people. We, our social skills, right, um, seems to be rusty. Or the way we love and have empathy or to, to just, you know, we are in the shoes of others and so on. We, we, are, we are losing that, or are we not? So this is where the church, we ask ourselves, what kind of people ought we to be? What kind of church do we want to be? And of course, it's not new. Countries like France, China, and uh, Finland, they already banned the use of phones. Of course, one is to help students concentrate. The other is to help them connect during uh, break times, right? Another article that came out just two months ago, which really shows us how our society is getting more and more estranged, and that is when about one in two Singaporean youth have problematic smartphone use. This is an IMH study. According to this article, one in three for adults. So when we don't have our handphone, we will tremble, you know. When you eat and you do not have your tablet in front of you or your TV in front of you, you don't know how to eat. 
somehow, somewhere, everyone, we know that technology, while it is really good, has also affected the quality of our relationships. And that's where, as a church, right, it's so important that we say, hey, real is important. Being real has power. And how do we do that? In spite of the deep fake that's going on. So nowadays, even in relationship, we can have deep fakes. Uh, we can have friends all over the world, all right? And then you can have images that you put on social media that are not you. They are not you, all right? They are an image that we present to impress people, to manipulate people. And so we are very wary. At the same time, deep in our hearts, right, we know that God makes us as people with the ability to love and to grow in love. And that's why this topic is really close to our hearts, right? So this morning, I'm calling all of us, all right? All of us, wherever we are, even if we are students or we are children or we are, you know, long time as a believer or we are new friends here this morning to value authenticity, guard it, promote it, all right? Uh, live in it because it brings tremendous uh, 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 advantages and blessings, all right? So, Let's go into this topic. So I want to share from a story from Luke chapter 7. It's about how being real is not easy. And that when people open up their lives, how do the rest of the group respond to that? It's also very intimidating and unpredictable. So I'm aware when I talk about this topic that we're at different levels of ability to open up. And we open up to different people in different ways. So there's no one, one a cookie cutter for everyone, right? Uh, but there is this, this learning. It's a process. It's, it's always about unlearning the wrong ways we love people uh, and learning the right ways. And this is where we are on our journey together. So this story in Luke chapter 7 is where Jesus has been invited to a, uh, a, a dinner, a lunch, a meal, a meal, all right? And in this meal, something unexpected happened. I want you to look at how Jesus responded to this woman who just took off her mask and be herself in front of Jesus, all right? And that was why she was there. And then look at the host of the party, how he responded. And the people that were with him, when people became real, uh, when this woman, right, showed up, what was their response? And this teaches us so much about how even if you, all right, open up, some people may not be able to respond the way that you hope. But then, I think the point of the story is this, whenever we are real before God, and whenever we are real with people about who we are, then God will do amazing work in our life. So let's read Luke 7, where one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. He went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. This is a Pharisee's house. Luke is very clear. This man is no ordinary person. He is a religious leader. And he has a certain way of thinking, behaving, and um, a tradition. All right? In verse 37, a woman in the town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. This is a woman who lived a sinful life. Luke, the author, tells us she has a shameful past. It's something she wants to hide. She doesn't want people to point their fingers at her. But here she is. Something is causing her to be in great distress. She wants to be herself, but she can't. And so she's trying to find help. And in this story, Jesus was there. All right? And then she began to uh, cry. And, and with her tears, wiped the feet of Jesus with her hair. And then she, she kissed them reverently and poured perfume on them. So this is a very unusual lunch uh, scene. And everybody is uncomfortable, all right? The sinful woman, Jesus, looking at all these things that are happening, the host, the crowd, the guests. Verse 39, 
And when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man, Jesus, were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. And Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Brothers and sisters and friends, I want you to hear the story of Jesus. He's going to tell us parable next. In this story, he tells us what it means to love people, how to be real, and what it takes to be real. Two people owe money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, had not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has put perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. So Jesus turns to the woman and said, your sins are forgiven. And the other guests began to say among themselves, who is this? Who is this man? Jesus, all right? He even forgives sins. And Jesus said to the woman, go, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Let us pray. God, we want to thank you. You are here. God is love. And so your love is here. Let your love fill our hearts. And let your love heal us. Let your love give us courage to love others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why be real? What does it take to be real? It's not just mere talk for Christians. There will be signs in your life that will show you are really wanting to be sincerely loving people. Being authentic is no pretense. We are not talking about perfection. Only God has perfect love. Man has no perfect love. But there is a journey where we learn, all right? And this is how this story has uh, come out to us. So in Acts 1, there was a mask host, Simon the Pharisee. And Luke tells us, because he's a religious leader, all right, and it, it, it just points us to consider why did he invite Jesus to the house? Because when Jesus was at the house, he did not honour Jesus as the guest. He didn't receive the customary keys, hospitality. Everything that should have been done was not done. And so it seems as though the Pharisee invited Jesus. Yeah, he's a very great man. He performed miracles. I like the way he teaches Wow, I admire him. Maybe by coming to my house, he can impress. All right, the Pharisee is thinking, uh, I can impress my friends because I have a friend like Jesus. And so, and, and so this host has a hidden agenda and he wants to make use, if you like, right? Um, and, and we will know in the Bible, Jesus always warns the Pharisees. He tells them, you know what is right. You know the law of God. Make sure your heart is real. Live the word of God. Don't just talk, but walk the talk. So he was always coming against the Pharisees or the religious leaders because if leaders are not examples, then how can others learn what it means to obey God and understand the law of God? So this is the background, all right, to this. Act 2, there is an uninvited, an unwanted guest all right, this woman, she was desperate. She needed something in her life. She was in pain. She couldn't deal with her shame. She couldn't deal with her problem. She doesn't know why it all started or how to stop it. So it goes on and on. This is being real, isn't it? We have some issues in our lives. We don't know how to love people. We don't know why. And even if we want to, we just feel stuck. And, and she's like having some things going on in her life. And she heard about Jesus. And that he is going to be at the house. 
And so she broke all the laws and traditions, right? So as a woman, she went to this place that is meant for a VIP, Jesus, hosted by Simon the Pharisee. And of course, all of the guests are Pharisees, important people. But she was driven by, by I, I, I can find something in Jesus. If only I meet Jesus, maybe Jesus can do something for me. All right? And so she went, she was aware she's a sinful woman. Being real is about knowing that we are broken people, friends, that we are not perfect. And even after we become a Christian, we are real, we make mistakes. And sometimes there are very serious mistakes we still make. And it breaks people's heart, it destroys our dreams, it can even destroy marriages, and so on and so on. And so this woman, she lived a sinful life, but she needed help. And this morning, when you go down the story, you will know that God never rejects us, no matter how broken we are when we come to Him. When we get real with God, we open up our lives to God. God knows what's going on, right? But the fact that we come to Him and say, God, this is going on in my life. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm experiencing. The fact that we come to God just as we are. One of the hymns I love singing when I was growing up is Just As I Am. I, I wish I can sing to you, but I can't. All right. Uh, just as I am, come to God. No conditions. Don't try to change yourself before you come to God. Don't try to fix the problem in your life before you come to God. Just come to God just as you are. I think this woman, she might not know the hymn Just As I Am, but she did go to Jesus and then she found something that was beyond her imagination. Your sins are forgiven and you can go in peace. It's really what she wanted. But no one could give it to her. But Jesus did on that day. Acts 3. The parable of the generous money lender. So here we have this story that is like, it doesn't make sense. How can you cancel debts? All right, 500 denarii, according to today's uh, calculations, is worth about two years of salaries. Okay, so uh, depending how much we earn, let, let's just say, uh, what, $100,000, uh, 100000 all right, and you just cancel the whole debt, no question asked. Why cancel? Because the person cannot pay back. Then this other person owed the money lender just $50, which is like two months of wages. Cancel it. Why cancel? Because this person cannot pay back. This story is too generous. Singaporeans do not think like that. Chinese do not act like that. Okay? So we have two against, two strikes against us. But the kingdom of God is not like that. Can someone say hooray? Yeah, God doesn't think like that. So he says, uh, in this story, the money lender says, forget about the debt, cancel it. Who will love the money lender more? Who will be more grateful? And, and Simon, the Pharisee, thought about it and said, well, must be the person with um, the highest debt. And you're right. Here is where broken people, when they get real with God, they come before God. And that's where they are grateful to God. Because they know without God, there will be no uh, cancellation of these debts. The woman, the sinful woman in this story is so different from Simon the Pharisee who had it all. She's so different because she owed God a great debt. She has a broken life and she doesn't know what to do about it and she came to God. The Simon, Simon, the religious leader, also owed God a debt because both owed, owed the money lender money. All right? And, the, the, uh, and Simon said, that's really not a big problem with me, you know. I'm a very established person. I'm very highly educated. And I have a lot of things going on in my life. I don't really need this thing called coming to God. I just need to be ritualistic in what I'm doing. And that will get me to where I want to. And that's why this parable talks about how God values authenticity. And that His love is always for the worst. So my first point to all of us is to remind us how God's love is for the worst. And I'm one of them. And you are one of them. And we have experienced it. And that's why we need not be shy when we come before God. No matter what we go through, even when we don't understand it, being real 
is a, a value that God cherishes. And that's why Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Jesus knows the cause, the spiritual cause for our relational um, 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 abilities. And he, and he says, right, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. You can go in peace. The exchange is very great. And I've experienced that in my own life. Whenever I'm broken, I come to God and He takes it away. And what He gives me far, far out, outweighs, uh, is much greater than what I gave to Him. All right? And so that's where I discover, hey, it pays to be real before God. And Romans 5, 6, 8. Let me just bring you to this verse that is very, very telling. In a nutshell, it tells us what kind of love God has and why we want to be real with Him. You see, at just the right time, where we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a very good person, he, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own life for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here, the writer tells us so clearly while we were still sinners. No conditions to coming before God at any point in our life, but a recognition, acknowledgement. We acknowledge, yes, we can come because He's the one to cancel our debt. Why is there a cancelling of debt? Where is the justice? Well, because of the cross behind me. When Jesus died on the cross, He paid the penalty for the sins of the world. And this is what uh, Romans 5 is talking about when we were still sinners, when we were not looking for God. Uh, God already sent His own son, sent His Son Jesus to die for us so that when we come to God, it is through Jesus. No one can come to God except through His Son Jesus Christ. Where we acknowledge his work on the cross and say, yes, I may be a broken person just like what the Bible says, but I can find life, healing, wholeness, and eternity, all right, in God through Jesus Christ. And that's why one of the reasons why we can be real, friends, to take off the mask and to feel the pain that we have and to look at the things that are stopping us from growing, that are hurting people, and how we, we can uh, look at this and say, yes, while well, this is true, at the same time, or at the same time, there is the power of God's love that will come into these areas of our lives and relationships, and then that's where the miracle happens, okay? And that's where God will do what only He can do in our hearts. Nobody can go into our hearts. No one, not even your best friend, your spouse, your parents, your pastor, no one can go into your heart. We don't even have the ability to go into our own hearts. But the love of God can. So I, I want to thank again Samuel and Maybelline for sharing their story with us. Uh, they have shared their prayer requests from the very beginning. As a pastor, uh, there have been occasions where we just us meeting up to pray about their desire to be parents and opening about how what it means to be parents and some of the struggles they face as they go through that journey, the medical uh, journey of preparing to be pa pa parents and uh, when things don't happen the way they hope for and how do they deal with their faith and how people around them are supporting them. The vet, why be real? Why be real? Because when we are real with people, all right, and not just with God, but with people around us, and especially the people of God, then we find God uses this to help us grow, to become the man and the woman that we want to be. What does it take to be real? Let's just go into, what does it take to be real? Let's, let's talk about what it doesn't mean to be real. Because sometimes we have very wrong ideas in the church, and that's not what we want in our church culture. Being real is not about telling the whole world your problems and struggles. You are not expected to tell everyone in this church about your family problems. That's not being real. Alright? 
Uh, being real is not about gossiping about others' problems. In the guise of prayer, when cell groups, in small groups, we share, we open our hearts, all right? Uh, and sometimes we share some of the deepest things in our lives. We expect people to respond in a certain way. And we're going to talk about that a little while more. Otherwise, this is not a church culture of authenticity, all right? It is a culture of gossiping and slandering. It is not about judging people. So we have to ask God to take away that tendency to judge people. Are you sinful woman? Immediately we label people. It comes out very um, sometimes subconsciously, right? Because we are wired to think in certain ways. But when we are talking about authenticity, we are saying that put that aside, guard against it. Otherwise, we cannot have um, what the Bible brings out to us, right? that kind of real relationship, brothers and sisters in Christ, that is founded or built and, and, and sustained by the true love of God. Um, also, not being real, it's not about fixing people. We don't have to fix people all the time. God is doing that. We are so happy about it, right? God is fixing me, you know, right? And God is fixing you. And He's doing a great job. I know he doesn't need to hear this, but then I just want to thank God that he's always fixing me. Yeah, but, but, but it's not me to always be fixing my, my mom or fixing my kids or fixing my boss or fixing my cell member. While, while, while we, while, when people open up, all right, when people open up, it's not so that you can tell them, this is where you're wrong. This is where you have to change. You're not good. Wow. When we have responses like that, what's our response? We are not going to open up. We're not going to say the second thing that is actually the real thing that's coming up. All right? We're just going to clam up. And then that's where relationship stops. So I want to bring us back to the parable, the story where Jesus, how he handles authenticity, how Jesus responds to people when they are real. That's so important because that's what makes us connect with people. On the one hand, we learn to be like the woman to share some of the things that we want to unburden ourselves with. Not with the whole world, but with people that we trust. On the other hand, we must learn, my friends, how to handle when people are being real. Not to reject them and not to make them feel more shameful or make them feel like this is not God's love and they feel so disappointed and hurt. I think we have experienced all the whole range that I, I share with us. And, and that's why I say that being real is not a one-time perfected um, a task. It's an ongoing. And, and in our families, we're constantly learning how to, how to, how to relate to our family members. Uh, we, are, we are constantly learning how to relate to one another in the church, in, in people that are around us. So what does it take to be real? So let's go on. What does it mean to be real? To be real is really to be in sync. Whatever we are on the inside, syncs with what's on the outside. We call this integrity. And when we don't experience this, we feel hypocritical. It happens in life, not just in church. You just want to be yourself, whatever you're feeling, your convictions, your beliefs, your thoughts. You, you want to be able to find that sync. Because it brings wholeness, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, you align. That's something that you, you, you say, this is who I want. But because we don't always align, so there's a, there's a gap, right? There's a dissonance. You, you feel very, like, not well like that, okay? And so this is where God is bringing us to come back. Because when He made us, He made us aligned, he made us very good. But when sin came into the life of the world, it disaligned us or misaligned us. Okay? And so that's where we have that. And being authentic, authentic is to be real on the inside, matching up with what's on the outside. And we know that this is very valuable. So guard it. Even if you feel like you're the only one that is wanting to lift out this very powerful principle of love, or even promote it where you moderate. 
in your family and in your relationships and you take steps towards it to be transparent. Not foolish, but transparent. Okay? And then it builds credibility. People look at you and they say, I can trust you when you talk about it, right? And even if you, you, you are honest about what you can do or what you are not, people, okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me know that. You are very reliable. And then people know how to come along with you and, and to help you grow or to support you or to pray for you or to encourage you or to warn you, whatever it is. I think that's where we are looking at God. How can we be that kind of people? How can we be that kind of church? So three things, and I will close. What does it take to be real? First, I think Jesus really teaches us uh, how to value the person, not the problem. Value relationship, not image. Value growth, not the things of the natural life. These are the three application points. All right, Out of the story that I shared from the very beginning, it says here, value the person, number one, not the problem. Jesus sees the broken person in front of him. But Simon sees a problem. You are a moral problem. You're a social problem. You are a disgrace in the family. You're an embarrassment. I mean, we are always seeing problems before we see people. I, I will be honest to confess that that's how sometimes I get stuck. Because I see the problem. I want to fix the problem. I want to hide the problem. I want to deny the problem. But no, here is a woman. She has been really hurt and she needs help. And Jesus sees it. I think being uh, the, the love of God sees who we are, what we truly need. And it always goes beyond the surface, isn't it? So the woman needs acceptance. Can someone tell me, even if I'm bad, that, that I have friends? Acceptance is what we all need, isn't it? And sometimes it is also to need help. I, I don't want to go down this sinful life anymore. Can someone help me? There's a cry in the church, a cry in our cell group, a cry in our office, right, where people are just needing help. And then, of course, they need love, encouragement, support, because it can be very hard to get out of the ruts, very hard. I remember one time I went, um, um, what is that called? Uh, canoeing. All right, so we had some expedition. I was teaching at that time, we went out for an expedition. And then my canoe capsized. Oh, it's a terrible thing to happen, right? I had no strength to come out of the water and climb back. So I unturned my canoe. I had to climb back. Otherwise, how am I going to go back to the shore, right? I had no strength. And... Uh, Help us, uh, um, the, 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 what is that called? The, there's this guard boat that goes along, right? Yeah, and then they will try to lift this heavy looking lady out of the water. It took us so long. And it, at the end of the day, I was so tired. They were so tired. It's like, oh. well, it's very hard to get out of the deep water. And that's why we really appreciate when people sit with us and they hear us. And people encourage us. They give us chances to change. They support us. They keep pointing us to growth, to truth, to God's power. And that's where the person needs that support. And I pray that we can be that kind of community, that kind of family. It happens a lot in our family. We see a person, we don't see a problem. All right? We don't label the, the, the person as the problem. In counselling, we always have this technique, separate the person from the problem but we always mix them up. And so here, Jesus tells the woman, your sins are forgiven. You now have peace. All right? Uh, Simon the Pharisee obviously didn't get it. And so that's where he missed it. Second, value relationship, not image. So where Jesus comes, he connects with the pain of the woman. What is authenticity? Connection, friends. Just connect. This week, I was in great pain, and one of the friends said, I feel your pain. Are you all really? I immediately felt half the pain went off. I was surprised by that statement's power. Honestly, like I told you, I was not mentally prepared. I didn't read up enough. The dentist asked me, do you want me to walk through? I said, no need, just do it. You know, I'm like, wow, gung-ho. I mean, so many people have done it. 
And none of them look like very in pain. But that's because uh, they never told me, you're seeing me like you know, two weeks later. So when this, this, this verse came to me, I feel your pain. Someone felt my pain. I could endure it. And thank God on the third day, there was no more pain. Honestly, no more pain. Okay? So, so this is where Jesus says, he, he connects with the pain of the woman. And if that day, uh, Jesus did not say the other things that he said to her, it would have been enough for her. Because he allowed a sinful woman to touch him and to do all those things to him in public in front of the religious people. And of course, Simon, right, the Pharisee must manage image. This is PR. PR is very important. I have a face, all right? Uh, I must keep my face. Um, I have to be professional about this. This is not looking good on my resume. Uh, this is not good for my reputation. I mean, Jesus, I invited you to come back to show my friends how well connected I am. Then now you, you do this this is so disgraceful, you know. And uh, image is about manipulation, to, to get what we want, right? To impress people. And, and these things are not authentic. So no matter how the world culture around us or our office, politics or home environment, all right, may, may, may have some of these things coming in. We are, as, as Christians, right, we are saying, God, we are not this kind of people. Instead, we are looking at connecting. Connection takes time. It takes patience. All right? It takes kindness. It takes gentleness. It takes humility. Uh, please read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What is love? And then that's where we are using it in our relationships. Valuing relationship. No shortcuts. And that's why many people prefer not to take this route. Just choose, let's just do the image management thing. Lastly, is value growth more than the things of the natural life. It is a fact that we are stuck in the way we love, all right? It's, it's a fact that we always sometimes, I mean, we, we, it's a fact that we sometimes have baggage that we cannot, that, that still holds us back. But then when, it, when we say, let's be real, it is actually breaking out of that natural life. Let's look at Jesus. In that story, he did not hesitate to demonstrate God's love. It's always available. He is who he is. He's the son of God. He came to show God's love to the people at that time and to die on the cross of Calvary. So Jesus knows that God's love is powerful and that he wants to bring that to the people that he meets. So at any time, you'll never see him hesitate to share it unconditionally. He's not like Simon the a Pharisee. But here is where we see Simon keeps to traditions and upbringing. These things are what we call the things of the natural life. Because we all grow up in a certain kind of family background, a certain kind of um, Christian behavior model is expected. We practice it, right? We live it. Sometimes it's really us, but sometimes it's a put on. I think that's where God is constantly challenging us break out of that. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts. But then it cannot go out. There's a natural life, there's a barrier. And I personally experienced this uh, the first time I read a book by Watchman Nee. He is a very uh, prolific writer. Not all his books I would recommend. However, there's this certain book that really changed the way I look at how God is changing my life to love people. You see, one of the things that God wants me to do is to love people as He loves them. But I'm finding it, hard. I'm finding it very challenging because there are things in my life that stop me, natural things, all right? And this could be my personality, uh, this could be my experiences. Uh, this could be, you know, uh, how I think about people. Uh, all these things. Watchmen need say, forget about yourself. As God's love fill your heart, go, use that to love someone. Die to yourself. It's not about you. It's about God's love, the powers of His love to come through 
breaks through your natural, your natural life. So God has constantly, all right, um, um, constantly trained me. If I may use that word. Never mind about your personality. Go because it's how God wants to express His love. Otherwise, no one will be able to experience it. They cannot know God's love just by a text. It's felt. It's something that's demonstrated. And so that's where uh, Watchman Nee in writing this article, he said, forget about your good behaviour, the way you must behave in church, the way, forget about your, your upbringing, your traditions, but when the Spirit of God fills you with His love and compassion and, and kindness, just share it. Give it away. All right, and that's how you can bless others. And when that happens, there's a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough. So it's a lesson that we constantly learn. Don't let our qualifications, our image, our bad experiences stop us. The second thing he talks about is your natural life is when we are in bondage. When we are hurt, we cannot love people. So whatever that happens in the child in childhood or sometimes in our life experiences, all right, we got to deal with these hurts. Otherwise, the love of God comes into your heart, but you cannot get out. Why? Because we have these fears or we have these um, hang-ups. And as a result, the love of God is blessing you, is fueling you, is helping you, but it's not flowing out. And so your family members don't feel that. They, they can't experience it. The people that you want to connect with feels, hey, we're not connecting. I mean, you're loving, you're a great person, but we're not connecting. So there is where, where God is saying, break through that natural life. If there are bondages, then we must come back to the cross. Because at the cross is where we confess our pain and then we leave it there. At the cross is where we say, God, in our brokenness, you make us strong again. So I want to conclude by challenging us. Be real because when we come, to God, like the woman, to Jesus, we find wholeness and healing. You can't experience this until you personally come to God. And many people have testified about how this has happened in their lives and continues to happen. But then it doesn't stop here. The love of God, the nature of the love of God is, is a dam. It goes out. And this is where as Christians we express that there is the desire, a compulsion. I want to do it. Although we are not perfect. I want to be a loving husband and you get stuck. I, I want to be a very a real parent or, or, you know, a leader or whatever. And, and then this is where God's love comes in and we embrace others. This is the, the story of the church. The, the greatest blessing we can give to the people of the world who comes to church wanting to know God's love, but they won't until they also see our lives. So let us build this kind of culture. I look forward to being part of a church that accepts real people and that reaches out and supports real people. And I know faith is something like that because I've been here for a while and I've experienced that time and again. And I thank God for all of you all right, And also, I pray that we continue to build a church that is like that, more and more like that, so that when people come, all right, and they will be touched by God's love through you and through me. Let's stand, and then we want to respond to God's word this morning. I'm sorry, I'll run a little bit, but let's have that song, and then we'll have a word of prayer.